Wiz, it's been too long. Yeah, like what we say, seven years? Yes. It's crazy. It's been too long since I last saw you. have a lot going on. So I know you're performing on Fallon. Yeah, I am. Okay, so this is going to be fun. But this is like, you know, Wiz. This yeah, is what you do. It is. So you're in town, and I know you've been running around. Obviously, you have a lot of different businesses happening. Mm. Okay, so talk to me about this because maybe I want to get into the business of Kush. How does this happen for you? For me, it started with uh, Burner. Um, you know, that's my big homie. Yeah. And I met him really early in my career. But him just being a, a trailblazer in the, uh, the weed community and just legalizing it and normalizing it and, you know, branding and just spreading everything. He put me up on game really, really early. And uh, we started, you know, uh, branding the strain and, you mm -hmm. know, getting it down and and it's it's been what it's been for the past 10 years, but as laws changed and as everything, you know, loosened up, we're able to, uh, you know, link with some really big companies. And now we're, you know, distributed nationally. We're in Florida. Uh, I just dropped it off in Pittsburgh yesterday. So we're in the whole Pennsylvania. Um, we're going to be doing Maryland. We're in Detroit. Um, well, Michigan. Uh, mm -hmm. We're in Chicago. We're, we're in a lot of different places. California, for sure. So, yeah, and we're going overseas as well. So so mm -hmm. how does that work with the laws? Is this something that you really have to research? Is there, I'm sure there's, it feels like probably a lot of paperwork yeah, or something well, like that. Yeah, well, the things, they loosen up. Like mm -hmm. a lot of countries or cities or states will first they'll start medicinal. Okay. And they'll let you, you know, pop up with a, uh, with a cannabis card. And you'll have to have your, you know, proper, you know, paperwork. And then there's other places like, out here, I think it's recreational, mm -hmm. where you could just walk up and just buy weed. So it's cool as hell. Yeah, this yeah, is exciting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was this something that you always envisioned happening? You know, uh, ever since the start, like when I first got put up on game, yeah, it's something that we were, you know, pushing for and just trying to be the leaders in it because there's a lot of different people who hopped in it, um, you yeah. know, just because of the money and stuff like that. Because there's a lot of money in it. But uh, to really, like, respect and value the plant and, you know, give the right people jobs and opportunities to, you know, use their skills and grow. Um, you know, Burner has always been, you know, the the one who opened the door for that. How important is that, though? You know, I think access to information is so critical. And I don't know, my experience, I feel like when people give that, they're usually good people. Yeah, 100%. Um, not everybody's going to give you the game. Like, some people will just try to, like, put you little bro you and like mm -hmm. have you working for them but they won't like put you in position to be a boss as well and um if you pick up on it and if you're down to do the work uh because it's a lot of work you got to be there in person you got to go meet people and you got to you know talk and shake hands and you know just bring the whole idea to yeah. the uh to the table and uh, it doesn't get done just by sitting at home and like trying to be cool or even just being too stoned. Like you got to really, just, <laughs> you got to get up, you got to get up and get out there, like for sure. Do you have to try different things out? And you're just like, no, I don't like that. Or like, how does this work when you're yeah, deciding? Yeah, they're like babies. Um, so you you can crossbreed different, you know, genetics, and you know, you could pop out with you know a hundred different, you know, what I'm saying different yeah. types of uh, of the same thing, but variants of that same cut. They're like children. So you, you and I just go off of my own personal preferences. So I don't like weed that makes me like, uh, you know, too sleepy or mm -hmm. too hungry or well, it, it's going to make me hungry, but like not like munchy weed. Right. Um, yeah, there's just certain, you know, ways that I like it to make me feel. And that's what I go based off of how I pick strains. For people in your life, do they expect you to give like lavish gifts to them, or are you just like, or oh, here, here's this, <laughs> like, you know, what, what is the expectation that you should always have something on you and you have to share? Probably just some weed, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I remember you talked about not sharing. Mm -hmm. Are we still not sharing? Yeah. I give people their own joints now. Man. Hey, that's a step up. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. went from nothing to like at least now you're getting your own. You can have a dupe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to talk to you about multiverse. Yeah. Do you believe in the concept of multiverse? Sure. Yeah. Why not? I mm -hmm. love that. Yeah, yeah. You know, because when I have these conversations about other dimensions, people are like, oh gosh. And, yeah. and I'm like, no, but we have to be so self centered to think that couldn't exist. Yeah. Like, yeah. there has to there's be. There's got to be something. There's got to be something. Yeah. What was it that made you title that? My inspiration was just showing the different sides of myself um, that mm. people might not get to experience or, you know, might not know about me. 
And um, it's like personally, I was able to talk about some things uh, musically, just the way that I uh, set the, you know, the beats up and the the how I picked the beats or how we made the beats from scratch. Um, it was it was a really different project for me. It was it wasn't something that you know I feel like a group of people could come together and be like, this is what the next Wiz project should sound like, or you know, it was just something that I really really mm -hmm. believed in. And it was a, like a real expression of myself. And I'm all over the place. So that's where the multi comes from. And I also feel like, you know, you've been in a game for a while. You know, your experiences are different. Do you still have the same joy and love for music as when you first started? Yeah, out? absolutely. Yeah. I love music. Music wakes me up, in, you know, in the morning. So I'm, I, I enjoy listening to other people's music. So yeah. making music is fun for me because... I go off of the feelings that I get when I enjoy music. So I want to, you know, recreate those feelings. Who are you listening to right now? The Isley Brothers. Yeah. Is that <laughs> you put it on in the morning. Smokey Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> Rick James. Yeah. yeah. And you know what? Seeing you over the years, you still have the same. It's the beautiful aura about music. You know yeah. I mean? Just, thank you. And I love that you still love it. Hell yeah. Because it becomes, listen, it becomes work after a while. It could feel like that. But I love that you've been able to protect that space. Yeah, I think for some people it becomes work when you're, like, chasing hits or, like, trying to win an, an award. Or if you, you know, want to be number one or the best ever. It's like, that's not that's not my goal with music. My goal is to, you know, express myself and entertain people who my music changes their lives. Was there ever a time that you wanted to do that where you felt like you were chasing no, I don't think I don't feel like I was ever chasing anything. I feel like uh, I played the game for sure, sure, and I know what that feels like to to play the game. In one hundred percent, you had talked about it was during an interview about looking out for you know just the new artists that are coming into the game and mm -hmm. OGs not stepping on their toes. I'm paraphrasing, mm -hmm. and why it's important to support artists when right. they're coming into the game do you feel like you had that support when you first came into the game yeah totally um i feel like a lot of the ogs you know let their ego go and was like yo wiz is hard mm -hmm. you know what i mean like i rock with wiz like he's he's the he's the young homie like he's up and coming yeah so yeah i feel like i had a ton of support and i think that, that just comes naturally like when you respect somebody's hustle you respect you know how somebody moves as a person um, that goes way longer than than just the music or or the money or the fame oh, yeah. or the, the clout, you know. So that's where a lot of that love comes from, and that's why I like to do for the young homies too. Is just look deeper, you know, beyond just oh they're going to be popular as hell. It's like sure. nah, how can I help this young dude last, you know, ten fifteen years in the game? What's your best piece of advice to them? Um, do what you want to do. Yeah, <laughs> it sounds easier than. Yeah. what it really is yeah, it best. is very hard mm -hmm. to do what you want to do and stick to it because mm -hmm. there's so many times that you're faced with this opinion that opinion right. do this do that you should do this but really doing what you want right how do you block out the noise and do what you want um i have like this really big imagination and i only exist in that world so <laughs> i don't know anybody who can tell me what it's better for me than me like I just I always grew up like that that's just how I thought and that's how I you know present myself like with clothes just my life in general like if it's my opinion I value that way more than somebody's <laughs> opinion on my opinion <laughs> but I feel like sometimes maybe is it hard for you to say sorry if you know you're wrong like are you you know like no I mean like but you're, you're willing to be like oh I messed up sorry um <laughs> well, it depends on like what the what the mess up is. Sure. Like, if it's if it's something for me, like I don't ever feel like mm. you're ju you're just like wrong. You learn from it, and then you figure out if you want to do it again. Oh yeah. So that's how I live my life. But there's not. I mean, there's there's right and wrong. There's sure. good and bad. There's like you know, I'm not going to punch somebody in the mouth for no reason. Right. But but <laughs> no it's like, reason. If I, I like make, how that stands out. If I make a decision and you know, and I stand firm on that decision. It usually goes the right way anyway, so I don't have anything to apologize for. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Who would you say has been, like, your voice of reason throughout the years? My voice of reason, definitely my mom. Oh. Um, my dad, too. I have a really good relationship with both of my parents. So just to, to have that good balance. And um, uh, God. Mm. Yeah. 
I love that. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like that's really just centered you throughout the years? Because, you know, this industry, it could be a lot at times, yeah. you know? You know what it is, Wiz? You've always been this grounded. Yeah, since, for sure. Since you came in, like, yeah. same energy. But do you mm -hmm. feel like, you know, there were hard times and they got, you know, they helped you get through it? Yeah, I think life in general is difficult. Sure. And, you know, just people, we got to know how to cope yeah. and how to center ourselves, how to breathe and how yeah. to, you know, not act off of, you know, certain emotions. Or even if you do, you learn from those things and you get better the older that you get. And um, you just try to do more good, you know what I'm saying? And you allow, you allow yourself to make mistakes or be around people who allow you to make mistakes because nobody's perfect. So that's not the goal to be perfect, but it is a goal to, you know, try to be in control of your emotions and in control of the things that you want in life. Yeah. And um, that's always been, you know, something that I've had a, a grip on. What would you say has been your biggest lesson throughout the years in this industry that you could have made a different decision, but you're happy with what you did and you learned from it? I didn't really learn too much from the industry because the industry is whack to me. <laughs> <laughs> I love music. Yes. But, uh, yeah. And it allowed me to make a shit ton of money and, you know, take care of my family. But the industry, I'm not with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I learned a lot from, you know, gaining a fan base and being true to myself and building, you know, a brand for myself of people who trust me, depend on me for the yes. things that are really me. And that's what I love. I learned a lot from being a parent, uh, having my kid. He's nine years old. That's been like my, yeah, that's been my biggest, you know, lesson in life and my best achievement, you know, so that's that's what I'm most proud of. I'm so happy for you. Thank and you. to see this evolution, I have seen you before being a parent mm -hmm. and you becoming a parent. And then now just to seeing how much you've embraced being oh, yeah. this amazing father. I'm a new mom. I need help with Give me your <laughs> best parenting advice. Something that I can hold on to. Um, <laughs> your best advice is you're just going to be scared as hell every day. Yes. <laughs> every day. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It doesn't stop Ooh, it. Yeah. Every second. Mm -hmm. Does that worry get better for us? Or oh, it's, it's a good thing. Yeah. You're, you're, you're protected. Like you got, Look, you got I, something to look after. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, my, my heart is beating so fast just even yeah. talking about that. Mm -hmm. I think of the worst. I don't know if you went through this initially when Bash was born, but I think of like such odd scenarios. Mm -hmm. Like what if, oh my gosh, da 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 da. And like. But that keeps you on your toes though. Because yes. people don't think that that stuff can happen and it does. Oh yes. Like. And you have to be programmed for it. And, you know, your job is to protect them. So some things are going to be out of your hands. But if you can say, hey, don't run in that parking, you know, that lot right there because a car could fly out. Right. You know, you would much rather tell them that right. than the freaking car hit them because yeah. you can see it in your head. You're like, oh, my God. Like, yes, yes, yes. You're checking to see if they're even breathing when they're asleep. You're yeah. like, yo, you still alive? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And they're just sleeping. Like Every you know day. I'm, yeah, so That's I know, me. I know. Okay, so when does it get easier? Does Never. it get easier? Never? Because you love that little I know, thing. I do. I do. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. It's a good thing. Do you want more kids eventually? Hell yeah. Yeah? Totally. Oh, man. That Hell worry. Yeah. You don't worry about the worry? <laughs> the worry? I the like worry? it. Really? Yeah, it's a good, it's a good worry. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Does your son listen to your music? Does he know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's up on everything. He, he knows what's up. Oh. Yeah, he records his own music. He's tight. Oh. Yeah. Are you... Uh, I mean, if you wanted to get into the music world, I'm sure, of course, you'd be supportive. But, you know, do you get worried about that? Or you no, just... I'm not worried about it at all. Oh. I feel like he would be able to express himself, yeah. which is really fun. He would be really good at it. And, you know, he'd make a lot of money. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why not? Yeah, no, for sure. Hell yeah. Uh, you had recently talked in an interview, I think it was with Who Kid, and you were talking about how you don't wear a lot of jewelry now. Mm. And, you know, just evolving. What would you say is different about you now than when you first came into the industry? You know, maybe before it was more jewelry and now yeah. it's less. What else has changed about you? I'm more patient. Yeah, I used to be really impatient. That is so interesting to mm -hmm. me because I would have thought it's the other way around. For real? Yeah, well, because you just have less tolerance for the, you know, all no. the BS. You know? I used to trip over, like, little stuff. Not trip, but, like, right. just be really, really impatient. Like Really? Yeah, I learned how to just fall back and just chill and let it happen. Do you think being a parent helped with that, too? Um, I think being a parent. I think being a co-parent. Yeah. I think just life in general, you know what I'm saying? Like, 
when you learn how to deal with situations, then smaller stuff, you realize how small it is. Yeah. And then, you know, the bigger situations, you're, you're dealing with them so well, you know, so it's like, it's just a completely different dude now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Man, and you've yeah. noticed this difference about yourself. Oh, totally. Hell yeah. That's cool. Mm -hmm. I like the self-reflection part. For sure. I like that. What would you say is the best thing you did as far as when it comes to co-parenting? How did you guys get to such a great place? I would say like realizing our own, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and actually checking it. Like, cause some people can like look it right in the face and not check it, but right. I feel like we do a good job of like maintaining respect, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like where we did things wrong before, we don't do those things wrong anymore. That takes a lot of self-awareness. It does. It, it takes both. Both parties have to be involved Willing in to do it. Yeah, exactly. Oh, wow. That's so beautiful. Mm, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's hard enough to do it within yourself, let yeah. alone having to do it with other people. That's I don't feel like lot. it's difficult because you everybody reaches that age where you start to, you know what I mean? You feel different. You move different. But some people fight it. They go against it. And those are the people who get stuck. And um, I'm glad that we're not stuck. When did it kick in for you? What was that age? Or what was it? Do you remember when you are just like, it all made sense? Mm. I'm 35 now. So I would probably say as soon as I turned 30, that's when. The, and it clicked. Yeah, that's when the button was, was flipped. Got it. I've been working at it for five years. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going well. Yeah, hell yeah. I love and, it. And you take it day by day. Absolutely. And it's not going nowhere. It's a lifestyle. You know that's what I mean? Right. Like when you're on that track and you really, you know, doing good and you're, you're, helping yourself and helping other people, you don't lose that. You know what I mean? And I still have fun. I still get f***ed up. I still, you know, do what I want to do. But it's just, I just feel different. So I move different. The workout. And yeah. when I see you work out and how committed you are, yeah. I'm like, I need to get in that gym. Yeah, you should. And, <laughs> right. Just because cause it, no, it's No, it fun. feels so good. And yeah, I just good. started getting back into the gym now mm -hmm. after like having baby. And I was just like, oh, I need this. Yeah. Like, I need it, mm -hmm. not just want. Where before, mm -hmm. I think, was more for vain reasons. Okay. Now, it's, like, from here. Like, right. I feel good. Like, and when I eat well mm -hmm. and, and working out, right. it just, it all comes together. Yeah. Do you feel like that's, like, you're committed. Right. Do you feel like, what happened for you to be so committed? <laughs> I just feel like it's my responsibility to take care of my body. Yeah. So I'm well, have you always felt that way or is that no nah, like i said uh, when i turned 30, 30 okay yeah, when i turned 30 i was like damn you know this is this is mine <laughs> we only get one yeah no nah, for real and we only have one life exactly so like naturally you know i have a nice physique so it looks good but like i feel great and i'm challenging myself i'm learning new things so you know the looks go with it and the results come later you got to really really put that yes. work in and um, it depends on what your what your goal is. For me, my goal is to just stay in shape, stay healthy, gain weight, get really strong, and yeah. So I, that's what that's what I work at every day. Out of your catalog, I know this is hard, but what would you say are the three songs that represent you? If somebody who didn't know Wiz Khalifa in a yeah. different dimension, yeah, and you're like these three songs um, encapsulates everything about me: Black and Yellow, mm -hmm. Young, Wild, and Free, and See You Again. Wow, those are three good picks. Mm -hmm. Like if an alien like yeah. just flew down, it was like, well, who's Wiz? Yeah. There you go, right there. Those, those are good picks. Mm -hmm. Now, I like you acting, and so Thank you're you. going to be doing it again. Yeah. Talk to me about this. This is exciting. I love when you get the extra checks, right? It's mm -hmm. like music's nice, you know, all the other businesses, but acting, yeah. this isn't going to be the first time we've seen you do this. Yeah, I've done a couple series. Uh, well, I don't know if that's how you say it. Series. I'm with you. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. Cerises. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, multiple series. Yeah, uh, multiple I've series. done uh, voiceovers for cartoons. Just a lot of different things. Uh, the newest project that's coming out is a movie called Spit and Gold. Mm -hmm. And it's about um, a regular label from back in the day that had like Kiss. They had um, George Clinton. They had the Isley wow. Brothers. They had a lot of different people. And it's just how they all came together and the stories of them being on tour and shit like that. And then recording and being in the studio. So I got to uh, play George Clinton in the movie. And um, that's actually coming out next March. So yeah, Wait, how was this experience? How much studying did you do? What was the research like? Like, what did you um, have to do to prepare for this It was role? more like just, you know, getting the costume correct because they, they just liked my look and they were just going to dress me up to look like them. But then we started doing lines and, like, lines, like, right. uh, 
saying lines, not right. not doing lines. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, not that. <laughs> I, not I that. didn't have to get that much in character. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> not that. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, we just started like you know going back and forth, and his grandkids were there, and they were just saying how much like they, I really reminded them of him. And um, so, yeah, we That's just cool. went through different videos and different, like, performances to just get his mannerisms and all that shit down pat and everything else. It was just like, you know, be yourself and kind of just have fun with it. Was there anything you learned about him or even the record label that you had no idea about and you were just completely, I don't know, blown away by it? And you were just like, ooh, that was so different. Then. It's, it's crazy to me because I always just dive in uh -huh. like I'm, i might know about somebody but then like after i did that i was like watching documentaries about his life about his childhood about you know his career and it was just fun to see how free he was like i i always knew he was crazy like funky but you know what i'm saying like dude was really out of there yo <laughs> like yeah some of the stuff he was doing was was next level and it was, it was pretty cool to see like somebody who believed in himself that much you know what i mean to put that out there get a a group of people they freaking living on a bus like a family you know what i mean mm -hmm. traveling together and everybody on the same vibe they speaking the same language they coming up with you know any any produced a lot of superstars from that too i didn't know bootsy collins was uh was of of you know from them so yeah it was cool oh that's nice yeah yeah what are the kind of roles that you want to do is it roles like this where you learn like is it based on like true story like yeah. what do you prefer doing when it comes to acting i think for me i just like who likes me like i I have long hair i'm not cutting my hair mm -hmm. uh we can tr we can cover the tats but they ain't really going nowhere so right. there's only a couple things that i can do <laughs> but i'm gonna do it right uh i'm really funny so i like comedy yeah um of course i think you know naturally the the more athletic i get i'm gonna do some action stuff and um yeah just you know see where it goes i heard that stunt doubles get a lot of money yeah i feel like i could or just be like a really stunt. good bad guy you know what i mean like like a like a real bad guy like just kick some ass in the yeah. movie say some tough shit and keep it moving <laughs> i also see comedy <laughs> though i could see like a hangover mm -hmm. Right? Can we see a Hell hangover yeah. vibe? I love, I love Dave Chappelle, so I would love to like sit down and just like laugh with him and do some <laughs> funny acting. You know? I feel like and I, I like Quentin Tarantino as well. That's one of my favorite directors. So you know, it could go, it can go all over the place. I, I like the acting world for you. Mm -hmm. It's fun. Is this something you've always wanted to do, or did it just happen on accident? No, I think I just you know pivoted into it because you know naturally my personality and um when I get in the room with people, they kind of just start getting visions and shit. And then especially linking up with my management company, uh, Smack Entertainment, they've, they've been able to just push me all over the place and just show people how, how valuable I am, you know, in, in multiple rooms. And then you've also looked out and extended working with college athletes mm -hmm. as well. Why was that important for you to help, you know, college athletes get endorsements? Yeah, it's, it's crazy because, um, you know, it's just to, help promote and just to show love to people who are you know valuable in that space as well i think it gets overlooked a lot oh yeah and um you know so it needs to be looked at yeah no mm -hmm. for sure when i saw that i thought it was great because you, you know college students need some money they yeah. need you know just to make ends meet and i love that you went into that route for yeah. sure thank you how was it with Smokey with michael phelps i saw that and i giggled a little yeah, bit yeah well how was that experience it was cool as hell we were at a country concert yeah that's what a lot of people don't even realize like where did you guys get in the same room <laughs> i was at a morgan wallen concert and that's when it happened yeah yep. was there anyone else that you've had you know an, a smoke session with that was unexpected and you're just like oh this was fun i expect everybody to smoke weed <laughs> <laughs> but with you that's different. Yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> you got to smoke one on there. Is there someone that you have and you're like, I think this would be a cool experience with that? Jay-Z. Okay. I want to smoke with Hov. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Every time I've had a conversation with you, it's always so pleasant. And it's always just been so much um, positive energy. Thank you. Do you feel like you get drained, though? Because you do give so much good energy out. At times, you're like, okay, I got to back up. I got to you know, recharge my battery. I do have to recharge. I'm, I'm a projector. So, uh, you know, I give out a lot of energy and a lot of people depend on me for that. Right. <clears throat> so I don't mind falling back, you know, for like a day or two and just being in the bed, just smoking weed, yeah. watching TV and just really getting, you know, recharging that back up because I definitely need it.
Yeah, no, I, I can feel that, yeah, right? Because yeah. you light up a room, so then it's like, what do you do to take care of you? Yeah, I just chill, just yeah. do nothing, absolutely nothing. What would you say is the biggest misconception about you? Probably that I'm short. <laughs> yeah, because I'm tall, tall as hell. Super yeah, tall. I'm 6'5". People think I'm like nah. you know, normal height. I'm not. No, no, not at all. <laughs> what do you want your legacy to be? <clears throat> My legacy is tight because people try to compare it to like, you know, the greats, but I'm just going to be my own great. I'm going to be right. Wiz Khalifa. It's going to be awesome. I love this. Yeah, yeah. Where do we go next after this? Because I know you have so many different businesses. <clears throat> Actually, I was I was looking it up and I was like, mm -hmm. Khalifa Kush, Packed Bowls, Professional Fighters League, mm -hmm. Mr. Caps. I mean, the list goes on and Liquid on. Liquid Death, McQueen. Yep. GLD. Yeah, yep. Yeah. When do you sleep? When do you relax? I I, I be chilling. <laughs> I haven't <clears throat> I haven't slept well in the past couple of days. Cause you remember we was talking about uh, COVID. Yep. I don't have it, but right. <laughs> I like how we have to clarify everything now. <laughs> it's not right. in it's not in here. Right. But <clears throat> um, I got lazy after COVID. Like I, I'm a hustler. Like mm -hmm. I like to go outside. I like to be with people. Be in people's faces. Give me your phone. Put my number in there. Right. Call me. That's what I do. But COVID like gave me like social anxiety. Like I got really, really lazy and I got comfortable. I was like, yeah, you know, I need like three hours before I get there. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I stopped hustling as hard. Mm. I started worrying about sleep a lot. <laughs> sleep is important. You need it to is sleep. Important, you gotta though. sleep. Yeah. But there's some times where you just gotta be like, you know what I mean? Like, I really don't really even need it all like that. Like I'm just gonna go hard for the time being. And it's going to pay off. And there's not a lot of people who's cut like that. So us being fortunate enough to be like that, we need to tap in. Like, we can't lose that. Yeah. So, yeah, I've been going pretty hard for the past, you know, week or so or two weeks, maybe even a month. I don't even know. I haven't looked back. Wow. But, yeah, I got big plans for, you know, what's coming up. I got a lot of uh, videos that I've been shooting, a lot of projects that I'm, um, you know, passionate about that I'm trying to see through. And then also, like, you know, doing a lot of podcasts and just speaking and just being like more it. out out there in the public. I like you know what I mean? This. More visible. Um, been in the fashion world. Yeah. Uh, met one of my, well, my favorite designer, uh, Hedy Slimane. Mm -hmm. Went to his fashion show. Been partying with those crazy motherfuckers. So <laughs> it's been cool. It's like, you know, it's like the crowd is changing for me. I'm not hanging out with, you know, young dudes with colored hair anymore. <clears throat> I love them. <clears throat> but... You're growing. You're I'm, evolving. I'm older. Yeah, yeah. You're so, you're experiencing new people and yeah. learning to grow with different. I'm people. an active 35 year old. You know what it is? People get so scared to embrace their age. Yeah. And I love that you're not scared, Wiz. Yeah. Not 35 is tight. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I feel like 20s. When you're like 22, you're still just 20 teen. Yeah. Oh, opinion. for sure. I think yeah. even like majority of your 20s. Yeah. Probably like up to like 27. Even <clears throat> then, <sighs> it's real around like 28, 29, and then you gotta like. Flip the switch at 30. Yeah, like, I think there you're like, oh, okay. But, like, even before that, there's so many things I did. I was like, oh, cringy. Yeah. You know, when you yeah. look back, but it's all part of your journey. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. What are you most proud of at this point? Obviously, being a father, Boom. of course. But outside of that, what else? Um, Not being just insane. <laughs> like, having a, a grip on life. Yeah. You know, still walk my dogs and you know freaking you know get happy when i see the sun going down like some people cool? lose that and i didn't i didn't lose it i, I still thank god every day like just mm. just because i could blink like i'm very very grateful so just you know just walking that. through life being grateful and being sane yeah absolutely <laughs> and we and we gotta appreciate those moments. i'm proud of that <laughs> absolutely i'm with you 100 yeah. percent. i hope you do a podcast I I, I'm, I'm going to you have to yeah, yeah. i would listen to it all day Thank just you. so you know but i just love the conversation and i think you just you know people feel not just relatable in that way but they feel good motivated after talking to you like mm -hmm. right now i feel all right i gotta yeah. get back on but yeah. it's like a positive vibe and i feel like a lot of times when it comes to social media or just the internet in general it can be really toxic oh yeah it's it's dark it, okay. Yeah, it just needs some balance. That's all. It just needs balance. Mm -hmm. So that's why we need your podcast. Yeah, we you. need that energy, Wiz. <laughs> I got you. And please don't let it be another seven years no, from it won't. the it next won't time be. I see you. I got you. I got you. I'm Promise. a mom now. Yeah, it's I, weird, but yeah. it's it's great at the same time. And I appreciate you so much, Wiz. Thank Continue you. all this um beautiful energy because we really need that 
you know, it's a it's a beautiful aura that you have, and I appreciate you taking the time to share it with thank me. Thank you. You're always so positive and electrifying oh. yourself too. Oh, so thank, thank you. Thank you. No doubt.